Those of you who have been to my studio know that I've got this wall where I've taken some old uh, albums and framed them because A, I love album art, and B, I love to take albums of great singers and put them on the wall so that we have them there as people to aspire to. So here we have Queen with Freddie Mercury. Above that is Songs in the Key of Life, Stevie Wonder, another favorite of mine. A little higher up, kind of out of the frame, we've got uh, Aretha Franklin and uh, Ella Fitzgerald and just, you know, random great singers that I really admire. And you may have your list of singers that you admire too. You know, I started to think about that. What is it that regardless of genre, whether it is musical theater, whether it is jazz, R&B, classical, rock, what have you, what is it that ties together these great singers of different genres? And when I talk about great singers, I'm not, I'm not just talking about the ability to be a great artist and to connect your music to your audience and to be able to really feel um, that community with your artist, but also technically great. So great at skill and craft and also great at art. And what is it that makes that? Well, today I'm not gonna talk as much about the art side of it, the ability to emote and connect with your audience and draw them in. That's maybe for another post. Uh, but today, what I wanted to talk about is technically, what is it that ties together all of these great artists? What is it that makes us hear a Freddie Mercury and go, wow, that's amazing, or a Stevie Wonder, or a Pavarotti? I started to compile a list and I started to realize that these are some of the things that I look for in great singers and that I also try to encourage my students and the teachers that I train to aspire towards in their own voice and in the voices of their students, of their teachers. And so here are a few of the different hallmarks, shall we say, of great singers. Number one, a large pitch range that they can sing over. In other words, they're able to sing in the bottom, the middle, and the top part of their voice with ease. They have accessibility to that. Or often in vocal circles, I myself use these terms, we call it chest voice for the bottom, mix voice for the middle, and head voice for the top. You can call them voices, registers, uh, elephant, zebra, kangaroo, I don't really care as long as we recognize that are, there are these different areas that we have to have ease and accessibility to. Number two, so number one is a large pitch range that they're able to sing over, a large range. But number two, within that large range, they also have a large dynamic range. One is pitch range, low, medium, and high notes. One is dynamic range, quiet, medium, and loud, or piano, mezzo piano, mezzo forte, and forte are the musical terms. And one is tied into the other. And the way I think of it is if I went and bought a piano and every time I play that piano, the low notes were always really soft and the high notes were always really loud. And in order to go to the high notes, the instrument had to get louder. I would probably take that piano back to the store because to me, that's not a well-constructed instrument. In the same way in our voices, if we have to get louder in order to sing in the upper range of our voice, or we have to get softer to sing in that area, or vice versa in the bottom, whatever it is, if there is a limitation on our dynamic range, then to me, that's not a well-constructed instrument yet. That's still an instrument in construction. So number one, large pitch range, number two, large dynamic range, and then tied into all of that is having an even tone across that range without obvious breaks, without obvious shifts, 
in um, sound quality that make it sound like two instruments or three instruments. So even though I mentioned that idea of chest, mix, and head, bottom, middle, and top, we wanna get that so that it's seamless all the way through so it sounds all like one instrument. When I do a gliss across my piano, of course the lower notes sound richer and thicker and the higher notes sound lighter and more tinkly, if that's a word but they all sound like they be, belong to a piano. They all sound like they are homogenous, a fancy word for they all belong together and they all have an evenness to each other. They all sound like a piano. Number four to me would be having clarity and intelligibility. Intelligibility just means you're able to understand what that singer is saying. And I'm not talking about, you know, the guy from Boys to Men that's, how do I say goodbye? That's style. He's doing that on purpose. But I'm talking about singers who impose certain things on their voice so that the voice is not clear. It's lacking in resonance. It's lacking in presence. But it's also hard to understand. That singer has to do certain things in order to get to certain parts of their voice. Whether as they go higher, they have to or whether they have to go or whatever kind of strange imposition they have to do in order to get to different ranges of their voice. And again, that's a limitation on the instrument. You should be able to understand the lyrics that a singer is singing clearly, whether they're singing in the bottom, the middle, or the top part of their voice, whether they're singing at a quiet, a medium, or a loud dynamic, it should be intelligible. It should be clear. There should be a warmth, a bottom end to the sound, and a ring, a clarity, a pinging of that sound so that there is a fullness of quality in the voice. And as an aside, often this is happening not just because the singer feels like they're locked into doing this, it's often a result of tension if they are not able to be understood clearly or there is a lack of clarity and resonance in the voice. Sometimes that's a result of tensions in the tongue and the jaw and the larynx and what have you, okay? So we talked about a large pitch range, a large dynamic range, an evenness in tone, clarity and intelligibility all the way across that range. And lastly, but not the only thing, I'm sure the list could go to 20 or 30 things, but what I wanna talk about last here is freedom and flexibility. Freedom and flexibility in the instrument in order to have accessibility and variety. In other words, even if you can make the best sound in the world, as much as we're gonna love that, at some point we're gonna get tired of that. So all of these great singers, they not only were able to do, sing really beautifully in their chest voice or their mixed voice or their head voice and have a large dynamic range and be able to be understood in whatever area of their voice they're singing, they also are able to use different colors in their voice, different textures. So they're able to allow their voice to get darker or brighter, softer and louder, but not just softer and louder, but maybe a little breathier here, or maybe with a little bit more of a, a bit more of a bite here to add something to what they're doing. And not to mention the texture of vibrato, which is so important as something that as audience members we love to hear, but is also so necessary for the health of, of, a, of a singer. And so the presence of vibrato, the ability to then play with that vibrato and bring it in and out, um, a vibrato that a, a classical singer might use might be always present. Ah, whereas a jazz singer might, you know, God bless the child who's got his own. They might just add it for texture here or there. So that all comes from having freedom in your instrument and having flexibility in order to add variety to your voice. And that all comes again from having a lack of 
intention in your voice and having built a strong, flexible, easy, free instrument from the bottom to the middle to the top. Think about this list. Give me some comments if you like about what you would add to that list. I'm sure there's many more things that we could add. But again, when I think about these singers and many more that are my favorite singers because of their craft, their skill, their technique, these are the things that come to mind regardless of what style they sang or sing today. And so I think these are things that we need to aspire to no matter what style we're singing in because these are the things that unite and make a voice um, compelling but also sustainable. We're talking about voices that were able to sustain throughout their whole lifetime. They were still singing. Pavarotti was still performing at age 68 or 69 before he died, uh, as well as Ella Fitzgerald and, and Aretha and, and you know all of these singers. They were able to maintain their voice to some degree of quality because of these hallmarks and because of these qualities that they fostered and that they always were demonstrating every time they got on stage.